said he'll do it he'll bring it to pass you know why because he hears us I'll say it again because he hears us so I started to change my confession and say this of this one thing I am confident you are always listening your ear ever attentive to my plea my plea of this one thing I can rest assured things are working for my good so I'll stand and sing in this authority don't know when you'll come don't know how you'll come but I know you'll come cause you always hear me I don't know when you'll come don't know how you'll come but I know you'll come cause you always hear me oh 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 of this one thing I am confident you are always listening your ears ever attentive to
Welcome to the JesusGirl.ent podcast. My name is Shaniqua Robinson and I will be your host. And so for this morning, this evening, this afternoon, this night, whatever time it is, wherever you are, I want to firstly say thank you, thank you, thank you for tuning in to Google for Podcasters, um, Apple Podcasts, Amazon Music, iHeartRadio, uh, every other pla- podcast streaming platform that we're streaming on. Thank you, thank you, thank you for allowing us to stream on your platform. For those of you who send love donations prayers any form of support thank you thank you thank you we are so grateful for the love and so we are still in the season of what did god say this is a soulful soul care sunday um if you guys have been following us for, for some time our original days are fridays and sundays where we air at 7 p.m since you standard time and generally on fridays it's a freedom friday on sundays it's a soulful soul care sunday however most recently we've been kind of and i think we we did it a little bit um, when we first started too. Just a few stay safe Saturdays here and there. So just make sure that you have your notifications on so that you can hear whenever we're coming on. And also be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Jesus Girl ENT TV, because we're going to start uploading some videos on there, some content on there very shortly here. And so um, for this day, uh, this is the day that the Lord has made. We are so glad and rejoicing in it. I am excited about what is to come. I am excited about what is to come. And I am so thankful for where the Lord has brought us even now. And so this may be encouragement to somebody that's listening in right now where you feel like I haven't accomplished that much or I haven't reached my goal. I haven't gotten as far as I desire to go, but maybe take a look back and see how far you've come. It's it's okay. I'm not saying look back to go back. (laughs) I'm not even, uh, you know, kind of suggesting that you look back and stay in a, you know, just kind of stay in that state of looking back, but just look at how far you've come. Because if you see how far God has brought you, then you'll rejoice in the fact that I may not be where I desire to be, but I'm definitely not where I was. Like that is something that you can, you can really rejoice in the Lord about. Like I'm not there anymore. And so one one thing that God has done for me, and I thank God for this, we're, 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 we're right into the episode, guys, if you were wondering, we're, we're just wa- walking right into it. One thing that I thank God that he has done for me in growth and maturity and spending time with him is giving me peace with my past. I have peace with my past. And what does that mean? No, the, the knowledge and understanding that there's nothing I can do to undo it. However, there's no shame or guilt attached to it because there are various things that took place in my upbringing and my um, journey that have brought me to the place that I am right now. And if it was good, bad, or indifferent, it, it taught me and it shaped me and it molded me and it helped me to learn how to depend on God even the more. And so I even for myself had to take a glance back and just look at how far we've even come with the podcast. And so I released my first podcast podcast episode in April of 2021 and from there to here we've released now over 140 episodes and I mean I, if I had a, a cheer button I would insert it right there that is amazing because just imagine if I would have never released one and some people wait until they get all of their ducks in a row they have everything together to just start to just go forth to just you know obey to just be obedient Okay, God, I'll do it. I just got to make sure that I have this kind of group that's supporting me. I'm in this kind of tax bracket. I'm living in this kind of environment. When I tell you, when God gave me the ability to get testimony of how many of my podcast episodes were birthed and released, it's, it's, <laughs> it, it, it was nobody but God. And he truly used the foolish things to confound the wise. Because without some of the things that people said were required to get the message out, it was able to get pushed out and with effectiveness. And and so much so that we were able to build a community on Clubhouse where we have morning prayer. Um, Now we're only on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays at 8 a.m. Central Standard Time. And people's lives are being made better. And there is no better, greater joy for me. And I know for our Heavenly Father than to know that I have children that are being obedient. And so you may have some believers that feel as if, 
oh, you know, you got to be so focused on the negative things that's going on in the world in order to be a righteous believer. But the most righteous believer is one that A, operates in the love of God and B, is obedient to God. God is going to ask you when your days are done, when your time has expired here on earth, what did you do with your time? You can't say, oh, I was waiting for this to happen. I was waiting for this person to, you know, for, to forgive this person. I was waiting for this person to do right by me. God is not concerned about that. He's concerned about rather they, you forgive them or not, rather they gave you the resources or not, rather they a clap for you, applauded you or not, were you still so, so obedient to me? It's just like the parable with the, the, um, the three different men that had to give an account for their talents. And one had three talents and one had, oh, one had one talent, one had two and one had five. You know, I got to be correct because the scholars, they come for me. <laughs> one talent, two, and then five. And the one that had two, he brought forth um, increase. He, he, he multiplied his and he was able to give it and count that, you know, I, you gave me two talents, I'm bringing you two more. Then the other one, you gave me five talents and I'm bringing you five more. But the one who had one, just one, hid it. And he gave an excuse for it. But there was a negative penalty that he had to pay for that. I had an opportunity to speak on last December at an event. And it was for gifts. Speaking about gifts and the gifted, the call of God. And one acronym that God gave me was I-O. And that's I-O-W-E. I-O-W-E. And so when you're operating your gift that God is giving you, you have to first identify it. What is it that God has given you that sets you apart? And then, oh, you got to own it. So this is my gift. God has given it to me. I'm going to, I'm, you know, I'm going to become as good as I can at this, as effective as I can at this, as efficient as I can at this, so that God can be pleased with what it is that I'm giving unto him. And then W, you got to work it. So you got to get it out there. You have to use it, make use of your gift. And then E, you have to expand it. And so once you have identified it, you've owned it, you've worked it. Now, the last one is to expand it. And that's where he says, go out and be fruitful and multiply. So once you have um, gone to a certain level where you feel as if I have mastered this, like I, I'm, I'm great at this. It's just like in school when you got tutors. So you may have graduated out of the ninth grade or you may have graduated out of the 10th grade, 11th, 12th grade, whatever grade you gradu- graduated out of. You did so well scholarly that now you can go back and teach somebody else. That is what expansion is about. So now because you are so great, because you have accomplished so much, now you have the opportunity to go back and show somebody else or help somebody else to get into their, you know, get into their gift to move in their calling. Because guess what? That gift that God gave you, yes, the Bible does tell us that it will make room for you and bring you before great people. Yes, it will open up doors that no man can shut and give you the opportunity to make connections that you could have never imagined. In addition to all of those great things, it can draw people to the kingdom of God. Your gift, your ability to sing, your ability to preach, teach, um, speak. I have a lot of poetic friends that I, I, I'm so grateful for their gift. They're never um, the ones that God has allowed me to come in contact with. Well, they're never bashful. Every time they grace the stage, they have a piece that they have been share, They have been holding on to and they're ready to share. And I can appreciate that because you never know who may need it at that moment. Just imagine if every doctor that God gave the ability to go back to school and practice medicine and learn learn about, you know, the ins and outs of healthcare decided, you know, my gift isn't good enough. I, um, maybe their name is D- David. We'll just throw some names out there. And because my gift isn't as good as Johnny's, then I'm not going to practice healthcare because he's the best at what he does. However, there's still a need for you. And that's why when it comes down to doctors, you have general doctors, you have family doctors, and you have specialists. And so you may not, first of all, let's just make this disclaimer. Don't compare your gift to anyone else's. God did not create you with a comparison in mind. So he didn't create you and say, I'm going to, you know, make this person because I want them to be less than that person or make this person because I want them to be greater than that person. God created you as an individual. And if you spend enough time with him and his word, that's why we're in the season of what did God say? And I don't know how long we're going to be here, maybe an extended period of time, because a lot of people have fractured self-esteem and low confidence 
because you spend more time on social media reading the opinions of others, like on Facebook, what's on your mind. Some people can have some messed up minds. I mean, I'm, for a lack of better words, their minds are not sound minds and they're not pure or holy or kind. And you're reading their, what they have wrote about what they're thinking about and you're internalizing that about yourself. And that will make you feel less than and make you feel worse about yourself. But if you get in the word of God and you pray and ask God to give you understanding as you're walking through the scriptures, that's why when we do a Freedom Friday and we're taking a text, I intentionally read the word of God because it's life. It's life giving. It will build you up. It will encourage you because he's your creator. And it's just like you need a manual for certain objects you put together. The Bible, the word of God is our manual to how to put our lives together. I was just sharing with morning prayer. God has really, I have really been meeting with the Lord um, in, my, in my personal prayer time, but I've been documenting some of these conversations and I'm going to release that very soon. But in my meeting, not, but in addition to that, in my meeting with the Lord, there is no topic that is off limits. There is nothing that I can't talk to the Lord about. And I'm so grateful that I am growing to that place where I feel comfortable enough to talk to him about relationship issues and finances and um, problems in my family and various topics that I could be talking to someone else about and getting their counsel about. But it's just like with your children, certain topics, even topics that they think are hard topics, you would prefer they come to you and talk to you about that opposed to talking to a friend who may give them bad counsel. And whenever you're going through something and you decide, I would rather not read the word of God. I'm just going to call somebody or I'm just going to get on social media. And, you know, some things they resonate. So you may be like, yeah, that. Yeah, I feel like that. But emotions are temporal. So you feel like that right now. Don't make a permanent decision based on a temporary feeling. And God is so wise. He knows the end for the beginning. So he's not going to give you counsel that's just going to work for right now. It's going to work forever. And so that that's another point that I, I want to just share on this Soulful Soul Care Sunday. Take care of your, the matters of your soul. M- m- allow God to minister to your soul. The Bible tells us in Psalm 23, he restores my soul. There are different things. Your, that's your mind, your will, and your emotions. There are different things that you go through. And we're such a resilient people. We've learned how to deal with traumatic experiences and just keep going. And it may have been something that was really life changing in a negative way, but you just kept going and you didn't realize that it impacted you the way that it impacted you until something similar happens or something close to it and it triggers you. And so those are the areas that you need to take to God, because guess what? He's our wonderful counselor. That's what the book of Isaiah refers to Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior as that he's the Prince of Peace. Um, he is our, the government shall be upon his shoulder. He is our wonderful counselor. And I'm, I may not be saying it exactly in the order that is spoken in the word of God, but you know, I can provide it. He is. And for the sake of just reference, cause I don't ever want to give information without biblical backing. It is Isaiah chapter nine, verse six, King James version, King James translation reads for unto us, a child is born. Unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder. His name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. And so this is who our Lord is. Everything that it is that you stand in need of can be found in him. That's why he says that if you abide in me and my words abide in you, then you can ask what you will and it shall be given you of the father. And if you abide in me, you shall bear fruit and your fruit shall remain. So I don't want to start something and it don't last for generations or last for eternity or last forever. God don't want you to be a one hit wonder. He wants what it is that he's building in you. And that's why sometimes it takes longer fruit that are hybrid fruit that are not real fruit. They can be, you know, manufactured in a, in a laboratory, but a a real actual fruit, it's got to take a seed, water, you know, sunlight, various stages of the process before it actually comes forth. Don't rush your process. Let God heal you in your process, mature you in your process. Deal with those things that you don't get the opportunity to talk to other people about so that once you finally do come forth, you're whole 
and you can be able to help others to get into that purpose as well and so i did give this um t- this segment a topic and the topic was to getting your purpose and stay there and so if you're not there today ask god to help you to get there because what's to come is greater than what's been i love you guys know that jesus loves you more and we will be back on on next week if you guys have any topics you want me to cover inbox me send me an email and i would definitely do that love you talk to you soon fresh wind blowing this room fresh wind blowing this room holy ghost fire fresh wind blowing this room fresh wind blowing this room fresh wind blowing this room holy ghost fire holy ghost fire say fresh wind Thank you.